In Canada, the population is growing at breakneck pace. You must have followed news of a population crisis hitting several countries. South Korea and Japan are the worst hit. China is getting in that club too. But Canada is defying the trend. Its population increased by over a million people last year alone. It's not like Canadians are having more babies. That's far from it. Canada's population growth is being driven by immigrants. Because the government is actively encouraging immigration, it is setting higher targets for itself. And this could prove to be a double-edged sword. Our next report explains. The Canada that we know of today is essentially a country of immigrants. Colonizers, to be precise. Before the arrival of European colonizers, Canada had a population of about 500,000 indigenous people. But European colonialism brought about a drastic change in Canada. The indigenous population fell from anywhere between 40 to 80 percent. Today, another wave of immigration is leading to a spike in Canada's population. This is part of the Canadian government's plan to increase the population. Last year, Canada's population grew by 2.7 percent. This is the fastest population expansion among advanced economies and puts Canada at par with many African nations. The country's population rose by over a million people, the highest ever recorded rise in the country's history. Canada now stands on the cusp of having a population of 40 million people. According to Statistics Canada, if the current trends hold, its population will double in the next 26 years. People from around the world are rushing to Canada. It's the lure of living in a developed Western nation. Greener pastures, as they say. International migration accounted for 95.9% of the country's population growth last year. And some countries stood out. Countries like India, China and Afghanistan. Indians made up 27% of the total immigrants that Canada took in last year. The Chinese were a distant second, making up 7.2%. Then came the Afghans at 5.4%. The growth in Canada's population comes at a time when its government has made immigration a priority. And while most governments would like to curb the number of immigrants they take in, Canada is doing quite the opposite. It's encouraging immigration and how. The Canadian government wants to be able to process and accept 500,000 immigration applications every year by 2025. So immigrants actually have the government of Canada standing behind them. Why is that? Canada faces a host of challenges. This includes high job vacancies and labor shortages. And Canada's existing population is aging fast. Unemployment is at a near record low, which means there's a strong demand for jobs. Labor shortages can be a critical threat to any country's economy. And Canada wants to avoid that threat by a mile. But that doesn't mean all is well, even now. In the last quarter of 2022, Canada's economy stalled and recorded no growth. That was described as a massive underperformance, one which nobody saw coming. There's a reason why many countries have tough immigration rules. Rampant immigration can change a country forever. It has the potential to alter the makeup of a nation's society. But from a more economic point of view, rising population alone can put governments in a tricky position. An influx of immigrants can create challenges in many sectors. Canada must make sure there are houses for the new immigrants, that they have access to health care, and that the country's infrastructure can support a rampantly rising population. There's not much Canada is doing on these fronts, but the population is rising, and it's rising fast. But the million dollar question is, Will the population boost lead to an economic boom? Our next story is about former U.S. President Donald Trump. He's been arrested. It's an unprecedented turn of events, and the visuals are shocking. Look at these images. But when did Trump get three legs? And why does the police officer's badge show garbled text? That's because none of these images is real. They are artificial intelligence or AI-generated deep fakes, and Donald Trump has not been arrested yet. I know it's all very confusing, so let's unravel what happened here. 
Let's start with a man named Elliot Higgins. He's the founder of an open source investigative agency. He wanted to visualize Trump's expected indictment, the one that could happen this week. Trump could be potentially charged with falsifying business records. This is in connection with hush money payments during his 2016 presidential campaign. If charged, he'll be the first former U.S. president to face a criminal charge. Now, Higgins wanted to visualize all of this. So he turned to an AI art generator. He gave the software simple prompts, like Donald Trump falling down while being arrested. And this is what he got. These deep fake images that you see. Higgins called it just mucking about. He shared the images on Twitter and thought, and I'm quoting, some five people would retweet it. Two days later, about five million people have viewed these images. In other words, they've gone viral. This is how sophisticated AI-generated deepfakes are. They can seem so convincing, and they're only getting better. What is a deepfake? It's a technology to make images, videos, or audio, basically to create fake events. Hence the name deepfake. It uses a form of AI tech called deep learning. Academics and governments have been using it for years. Now amateurs are dabbling in it too. And you don't need special skills for it. There are softwares available on the internet, and they're apparently quite easy to use. They're being used to create all kinds of fakes. Putting man. words in a politician's mouth. Making someone dance like a pro. Making Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg bra brag about having, and I'm quoting, total control of billions of people's stolen data. It was a fake. One man with total control of billions of people's stolen data and making Barack Obama abuse Donald Trump. More recently, a deep fake showing Bill Gates talking about the Wuhan virus. If you got it on your phone, do know that it was a fake. And that's the scary part. We fall for them. They look so real, but they can be dangerous, especially to volatile news environments and governments. They're being used to harass, intimidate, and demean people. So far, they've not been able to cause major damage because governments have reliable security imaging systems in place. But the technology is developing, and it can do a lot more, like changing stock prices. They've already done that. Also, they can influence voters and provoke religious tension. But there's something even more insidious at play here. Deep fake is creating a zero-trust society, overwhelmed by fake news, where people give up on differentiating between reality and lies. It all looks the same. So what is the solution? Social media platforms have to reevaluate their approach. Guardrails have to be put in place. And what about governments? Well, they have to win this tech race. For any legislation to have teeth, the detection sy systems have to be upgraded. They have to be better than the creators. And ironically, AI may be able to help here. It's difficult for us mere humans to spot fake content, but AI can. Thankfully, deep fakes are not always malicious. They can also be entertaining, like when famous painter Dali took selfies with museum visitors. They can also be helpful, like voice cloning that restores people's voices and improves dubbing in foreign language films. In one case last year, the Dutch police revived a cold case from 2003. They created a digital avatar of the murder victim. So the balance between the good and evil of deepfake can be perplexing. But it seeks urgent action because deepfake has become the reality of our times. Our last story today is about a beloved storybook bear, Winnie the Pooh. Once upon a time, the biggest problem in his life was shortage of honey jars. But those days are long gone. His biggest hurdle now is China's censorship. We're talking about a new horror film. Winnie the Pooh gets a sinister twist. It's called Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. But the only one it has managed to scare is the government of China. The film was supposed to be released in Hong Kong this week in over 30 cinemas. But suddenly something happened. Cinema chains began pulling out one by one, and suddenly all of them had cancelled the screening. The film distributor apologized for the inconvenience, but did not give a reason. Meanwhile, the film's director claimed the decision had nothing to do with the movie itself. There was no technical issue. He pointed to political reasons. Now, remember, Hong Kong is a semi-autonomous Chinese territory. And unlike Pu, China continues to play a sinister role here. And you know China's relationship with this bear. 
It has always hit Beijing's nerve. You may ask why. Why is a cartoon bear such a touchy subject for Beijing? All because of a meme and the memes that followed. Look at this. These images show Pu's resemblance to Chinese leader Xi Jinping. And other characters from the cartoon also make an appearance. In 2013, when Xi visited the US, this image made the rounds. It shows then US President Barack Obama walking next to him. Portly Winnie is being compared to Xi, while Lanky Tigger is Obama. Here's, an, here's another example from 2014. In this case, it was Japan's then Prime Minister Shinzo Abe standing next to Xi. Abe has been compared to a gloomy looking Ayor, while Xi is Poo with his eyes closed. And these memes did the deed. Critics the world over started comparing Xi with Poo. The bear turned into a political symbol. It even featured in China's COVID lockdown protests. They used him to mock the Chinese president. They used humor to call out serious issues. But Xi Jinping does not find it funny. His government banned the 2018 Christopher Robin film. Chinese censors continue to clamp down on poor references. They scrub images and comments about the bear. These actions, along with the ban on this horror film, only reiterated concerns. Hong Kong's freedom is shrinking. China is silencing pro-democracy dissidents. It imposed a national security law following the massive protests of 2019. In 2021, a film censorship law was passed in Hong Kong. It bans movies that could be a threat to national security. The law officially targets subversion, secession and terrorism. But it's been used to wipe out political opposition. Last year, two films were dropped from Hong Kong's International Film Festival. It has also impacted Hong Kong cinema culture. It produced 234 films in 1993 alone. But last year, the number dropped to 24. And now it seems Winnie the Pooh is the latest national security threat for China. There's no official reason on why the film was removed. Perhaps another example of China's censorship. Perhaps an act of self-censorship with theatres constantly under pressure to comply with China's norms. Whatever be the case, people are upset. They're challenging the decision with more humour. Some are calling China's censorship scarier than the horror film it banned. Others are saying it's a shame they won't be able to catch Xi on the big screen. It's ironic that a global power is scared of a cartoon character. But true as that may be, for now, the honey-loving poo is stuck in a sticky situation in China. And finally, it's time for Vantage Shots, images that tell the story. A sandstorm is blinding China's capital. It has engulfed Beijing, shrouding buildings and roads with dust. Meanwhile, California is braving its latest bout of harsh, wintry weather. A tornado is ripping through it, sending debris flying and killing at least five people. In Lebanon, tear gas was fired as police clashed with protesters in Beirut. The unrest comes amid growing anger over the country's economic crisis. And lastly, images from history. Today, we take you to 1999, when for the first time in its history, NATO attacked a sovereign country. It was led by the US. Warplanes began a bombing campaign against Serbian military targets in former Yugoslavia. We leave you with these images. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Yes, I